Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. This is another episode of Spurs Around the World where we hear from international fans giving their thoughts on the game. Tottenham Hotspur 3, Carabag nil in the Europa League. Hey Chris, Mason here from the US, the American voice of Tottenham Hotspur. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok as the Coys Boy. And I really loved what I saw from the lads today. Uh, unfortunate start with Radu getting the red. Uh, yes, it was a clumsy challenge, but you got to feel for the lad. He's under so much pressure, doesn't get too many opportunities. Tried to take his today and, you know, it didn't pan out too well for him. But I love the way the lads adapted. It's, it kind of hurt me to see Lucas Berval come off. I really wanted to see him shine, especially against a team like Karabag, who's going to sit back. I thought Lucas would have had time to, you know, pull his Swedish strings and, and make something beautiful happen. I I personally thought Saar should have come off instead, but I'm not Ange, and my tears were quickly wiped away when uh, Pap Saar forced the mistake early on, setting up Solanke to play Brennan in. How can you not be happy seeing Brennan Johnson on the score sheet? Rooting for this guy so much, proving all the doubters wrong. Um, and then beyond that, I really want to shed some light on Dom Solanke's performance today. Uh, did so much dirty work. Uh, a lot of his, what he did today and a lot of his contributions can be underlooked. Um, but his off the ball movement, he was the total outlet, the only outlet we had. He was running left and right across the pitch to... Uh, to free up space when everyone else was back defending. And often he himself was back defending as well. Um, he fully deserved his goal. I was so happy to see him on the score sheet as well. And I'm really excited to see what else he brings to the club in the near future. Papsar, uh, that guy just makes me happy. So happy he scored. Um, and honestly, I thought it was a pretty, pretty. I mean, I, I wouldn't say dominant. Anyone that sees 3-0 would think we had a walk in the park, but it was nothing close to that. Uh, but I love the way the lads adapted. I'm excited to see what happens this weekend at Old Trafford. And I'm excited to see how they come out next week against Ferenc Varos in Europa. Thanks again for having me on. Hi, guys. This is uh, Simone Deluamo from Italy for Chris Collin. What a win. What a win, guys. Absolutely incredible. Incredible effort by all the team. Actually, it was incredible to see, to watch a post side winning 3-0, keeping the clean sheet, not concede any kind of goals, uh, playing down to 10 men, almost 90 minutes. Absolutely incredible effort. They do, they do. This team has got that sort of togetherness that, togetherness that is uh, absolutely massive and very, very crucial for every, for every winning side. So, absolutely delighted for the win. Incredible way to start the European campaign. Three points. And now it's time to, to look forward, to look forward on, on Sunday, because Sunday will be uh, the most crucial, the most uh, important test to show the levels that this kind of team, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of project can potentially reach. All to effort, menu, massive, massive game on, uh, on Sunday, even because this, this club needs points. Uh, after uh, what's been since now a very poor start of the season in, uh, in the Premier League. Hello, my name is Juan Pablo. I'm a co-founder of Londres Blanco and a vice president of the Buenos Aires Argentina OCC. What a game today. We hoped it would have started in a different fashion, but Royal Dragosin made a critical error and decision, I would say, uh, leaving the team with 10 men with 83 plus minutes to go. Thankfully, the team really excelled in 
in how they grouped together, how they pressed, and how they attacked in the same fashion as if they were in 11 versus 11. Ben Davis almost gifted a goal in the same fashion. Thankfully, Vicario was there. Vicario was magnificent today. Also leading the side after Hyunmin Son was uh, subbed off due to some pain. And we can talk about Archie Gray being great in a very difficult environment. He's not going to excel the same way you know, at the right back spot rather than in the midfield, but he did show himself. We can also talk about Brennan Johnson and how he scored and he's showing promise as the one we were hoping, right? With the confidence of being able to go to the right and finish. We can talk about Solanke getting that interception and putting the pass and also scoring the tapping, being where he is supposed to be. I don't want to spend time on the ref because I think it was shameful from him, the penalty. But overall, it was a classic Spurs performance that we would eventually have lost years ago, but we got the win and that's all we were hoping for and we're happy with. Three points. Well, I'm Eduardo Lores from Spain and I am one of the few Spanish followers of the Tottenham Hotspur. Well, my analysis about the Tottenham against Carabao is quite a bit simple. I think we won just because we had much more quality. The gap between both teams was enormous and even playing a quite bad match we won because of mistakes of the goalkeeper or the defense not anything more this match against probably any premier league team would have been a defeat by far i'm not angry with our forwards i think solange played well sonny also, I'm ready and play well the time that he could play. So, yeah, that part, I'm not concerned. I'm happy. The problem is in our defense, as I mentioned in the last game. Drowsy with the ball has makes me much more, uh, creates in me my, a lot of concerns. Um, I think Archie Gray played well, Van de Ven was the best, and if it hasn't been by Van de Ven, we could have probably not won, even scoring the three goals. Vicario, okay, he has some things that I don't like, but enough. Davis, he is not so I think we should put uh, Alfie Toronto in his place. He's great with the ball, and that's what uh, one of his problems with Agustin also. He's an academy player that I love. And by the other part, in the midfield, Bisuma, I think we know Bisuma, good match, bad match. Um, match Ansar, I think he will be much better with the time. He needs to get much more form. But probably in a few weeks, uh, having a lot of uh, play time, we will see the best Pablo Matar Star game. And that will be my Russian. Come on, you sports. Hey, Chris, just shy here from Perth, Australia. Um, part of the Old Spurs group here. Um, so, watched the game myself. I first half at like three in the morning and then fell asleep to watch the second half when I got up. The crazy times we, uh, we do for Spurs here. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really good game, obviously, poor start with Dragerson getting sent off in the um, in the first kind of eight minutes or so, but I think this game really showed that Ange will adapt, and it's what he's been kind of questioned on a lot. We adapted our tactics, he made an early substitution, and to be honest, 3-0, 3-0, like Quarabag and no, you know, they're no mugs, they, uh, you know, played uh, last year against Bayern Leverkusen, and did pretty well in the Europa League. Um, so no, I think it's all things positive. I think it was really good 
that Solanke got another goal, which was great. Johnson, who honestly just the confidence must be getting after such a rough, you know, couple of weeks he had from the idiots online. Um, so no, feeling really, really positive. It's good. Three wins on the bounce, I think, really helped him with that kind of horrible streak that was going on. I think seven wins and thirty games or something. Um, obviously, being Australian, I'm, I'm all behind Ange reading his book and that he really. He just speaks well, and I just think we need to give him time. The whole manager bounce just doesn't do anything. Um, I think there's a lot of confidence going into the United game. A couple of guys here from Optus Sports actually all predict Spurs are going to beat Man United. Um, yeah, I think it's great to see Sonny kind of just playing well and just free flowing football. It's, it's what we want to see. So, um, yeah, great. You know, thanks for having me on with this. Great channel, as always. And um, from here in Australia. Come on, you Spurs. Cheers. Hey, everyone. My name is Grant. This is Kev. This is Josh. Uh, we from the Crazy Yiddos Down Under, part of a big WhatsApp group, and we're representing all the boys. Uh, all originally from South Africa. I've been supporting Tottenham for a long, long time. Uh, I'll call myself Mr. Positive of the group. Um, I tend to see the cup half full. This guy tends to be... Car, let's call it a cup half empty, and this guy's somewhere in between. Uh, but one thing we've got in common is that the pain of losing, the pain of losing, we've had to wake, wake up at 1 a.m. and go to sleep at 3 a.m. after pumping the couch, being pissed off that we've lost, and that uh, really screws up the next day. Um, Definitely the world's uh, best supporters for our commitment to those uh, 1, 2, 3 a.m. kickoffs. Or even the Carabao game, 5 a.m. kickoff, which is delayed to 5.45. It's pretty difficult. Yeah. So I'll kick off. I'll <laughs> kick off just covering Brennan Johnson. So super happy that he's on a three-game scoring streak. He's uh, starting to build his um, confidence. Um, and I think he took his goal really well today. I think the biggest issue that I've got with Brennan is that where he has space to attack, he's got seven, eight metres, he needs to back himself to drive to the bar line, take the play on. If he if he stuffs it up, that's fine. But you've got to take risks. You this can't keep on playing so, and safe. And I say so, he's 22, he's <laughs> young, he's raw, and he's got a lot to learn. But there's no better way of sending a finger up <laughs> to the guys like this that were negative and giving him shit only a few weeks ago. But I'll tell you this. This is the guy who has coached but has never coached. So he's been known to send tweets to... Harry Kane, Ryan Mason, Son on improvement <laughs> tactics <laughs> and uh, what they're doing wrong in a game. It's true, it's true. But never abusive. He did not abuse Brennan. But anyway, just coaching Brennan. When we all take a big picture view, we're on a strong upward trajectory. Uh, if we look at the, the minutia of game by game, we can get frustrated. Uh, some more than others, um, but if we take a big picture of you, we support Ange, we are going places, and we are super fucking excited. Let's, 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 you know, it's representing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick comments on today's game. Um, look, I think it was a tough game after Drew Goosen got sent off. Um, I thought Biss had a great game. I thought sometimes he lost the ball, but he backed himself, he took risks, and I thought he... Uh, he really put a he put himself out there today. Archie Gray for me, especially in the first half, was uh, we've got a play on our hands. Oh, I love absolutely. watching that kid play. His energy and his feet are amazing, especially for set, such a young kid. And so just I, before I Kev, felt for he, Bergvold. Yeah, today. I was going to say that the the guy it was his chance to shine. He was sacrificed. He probably took it pretty badly, but his chance will come. And I will say, I think Bergvold is a once in a generational talent. He is someone who's young and I think he just looks so classy that I'm so positive about him. So, so to sum up, we're absolutely uh, Angie in here. We're big supporters <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to a great season. Cheers. Hello, my name is Darren Altman. I'm from London, England. Oh, wow, what a game. Where do you start? I suppose with uh, Dragusin sending off. Hopefully, um, I'm a glass half full man, so hopefully he will learn by his mistake. Uh, it was a last man challenge. Um, he'll probably have his tail between his legs for the next few days, but he will learn from it and hopefully uh, he won't do that again. Um, I was gutted for Bergvall. 
um, being subbed after the uh, Dragusin sending off. I was really, really looking forward to seeing him. Um, I loved what I've seen so far. Um, he shows great promise, but we've got a long season. We've got a lot of games in Europe, so I'm sure he will get other opportunities to start. I thought Archie Gray had a fantastic game at right back, really confident, coming forward, defending well, doing a few uh, tricks and low look pass in there. He's a great talent for, for the future and he looked really confident. Um, what else? Uh, Solanke got his first European goal. He scored at home against Brentford. This was his first European goal. Uh, played really well. Great movement. That tap in after Son's shot just shows how desperate we were for a striker to be there right in the box, front and centre. We've really, really missed that. Uh, and we've had a lack of goals um, recently. But I think... Uh, that position, that sense of him being in the box at the right time is really going to bode well. And his uh, movement off the ball uh, was really strong as well. Uh, Pap Sarr got his goal. He had a really good game. Johnson, uh, really happy for him. He has proved all the doubters wrong. He scored three goals in a row. Um, and so shame on all those who are giving him stick. Hopefully his confidence is going to grow and grow. Vicario... What do we say? I mean, <laughs> he goes from being an absolute liability with his sort of short passes from the back and putting his defenders into trouble um, and maybe giving the odd ball away to uh, the attack. But then he goes on and does five absolute world-class saves. So um, I think he's a brilliant goalie. I was pleased when we signed him. I think he's had a crisis of confidence. Um, uh, I think after the, the Everton game, where all the uh, attackers were crowding round him uh, after a corner and other teams sort of jumped on that and were really targeted him, targeting him. So I really hope that uh, he's going to turn the corner because he's the most unbelievable shot stopper. What do you say? It was a heart in mouths game. It was matador football. I mean, like they said on the commentary, if we're going to play that like that in Europe, uh, it's going to be exciting. Really, really enjoyed the game. I mean, how entertaining was that? And to, to win 3-0, all right, you can only beat what's in front of you, but to win 3-0 with nine men for uh, almost 90 minutes, it just shows how schooled we are. And for all the doubters in Ange, we trust. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, Gary from London, England here. Just going to do a quick update on last night's game. Uh, Chris Cowling just wanted my thoughts on the uh, on the game. Um, what can you say? <laughs> Didn't start the best. Uh, obviously, Dragerson sent off on the seventh minute. Again, I don't really know too much whether it was mainly his fault or if it was a bit of a short ball from Van de Ven. Uh, I'll have a look back at that today. But great atmosphere at the stadium. Um, I mean, one thing you can say, as soon as we went down to 10 men, it's definitely not Conte Mourinho football. It's still front foot pressing. We still kept a very high line. Um, we played some really good football, to be honest. I think a slightly better team. We may have been in trouble, but at the end of the day, you just beat who's in front of you. Uh, he kept Johnson on the pitch. Johnson got the goal. Um, we rode our luck. Obviously, the penalty miss, which was brilliant. Um, but I felt it was just great atmosphere at the stadium. You know, back to European nights. You know what everyone wants. Um, and never a dull moment under uh, Postacoglu. That's, that's the thing for me, um, you know. Looking at past games, you'd leave there with a 2 or 3 nil win and you were bored under Conte, uh, even to a certain extent under Mourinho. But one thing with Ange is he's not going to change his game of play, even when we go down to 10 men. And um, I thought, I did think Ben Davis had a great game. Um, also, Basuma, not great, but Vicario, wow, he was brilliant. He does some lovely shot-stopping saves. There was a moment where he came out and he had to be first to the ball. And if he hadn't of, he'd have been sent off as well. And then we could have been in trouble. But he got there first, which was good. Uh, another shout for Van der Ven. Absolutely amazing. He played brilliantly. Um, Kudaszewski, has to be said, was good. Um, and Solanke looked great as well. So all in all, good game. Clean sheet, 10 men, European games back at the stadium. Can't really ask for more than that. But um, certainly wasn't a boring game, either the game or the atmosphere. So come on, you Spurs. 
Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. If you are an international Spurs fan and would like to appear on a future episode, please do get in touch. Uh, email TottenhamFanChris at gmail.com. Have a great weekend and come on you Spurs.